Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 5 tháng 7, 2024. Đến với VTV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, khi đã tiếp xúc gần gũi với những người dân ở thôn quê, ông Frank Scotton đã thấy rõ mức độ ảnh hưởng sâu rộng của Cộng sản. Trái hẳn với sự suy nghĩ lúc trước của ông, cho rằng Cộng sản chỉ mới bắt đầu nhúm rễ sau năm 1960, sau khi mặt trận giải phóng thành hình. Ở Bình Định thì Cộng sản đã có mặt ở đó từ năm 1945, khi Việt Nam còn nằm dưới sự đô hộ của người Pháp. Đối với người dân Bình Định, Cộng sản đã bám rễ sâu từ cả 20 năm trước thập niên năm 1960. Vậy thì tại sao người dân ở nông thôn lại theo Cộng sản? Họ có sự lựa chọn không? Và nếu có, thì tại sao họ không ủng hộ chính phủ miền Nam? Bên cạnh những suy nghĩ về truyền thống, về sự chọn lựa quốc gia hay cộng sản, trong quá khứ những cuộc biểu tình chống đối của Phật giáo và phản ứng của chính quyền đối với những chống đối đó cũng bồi thêm những suy nghĩ đã di lại từ trước. Frank Scotton nhận định rằng người công giáo và người Phật giáo đều rất đau buồn về sự việc đã xảy ra và cho rằng chính quyền có thể tránh những chuyện đáng tiếc đó. Năm 1963 là năm của những bất đồng ý kiến lan rộng, những phản ứng vụng về, thiếu uyển chuyển của chính quyền, những quyết định sai lầm quân sự khi tái phối trí các sư đoàn ra khỏi các điểm trọng yếu và đã làm suy giảm tiềm lực của miền Nam Việt Nam. Trước tình hình náo loạn của các cuộc biểu tình của sinh viên, học sinh, Phật giáo, công giáo và đảo chính sắp xảy ra và Cộng sản ngày càng hoạt động bạo dạng hơn ở các vùng nông thôn. Một nhân viên Hoa Kỳ hoạt động ở Việt Nam đang tiếp xúc gần gũi với người dân đã thấy gì, nghĩ gì. Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi phần 6 phỏng vấn đặc biệt qua tình hình Việt Nam trong những đầu năm thập niên năm 1960 qua các công tác của ông Frank Scotton do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. So actually, they don't have a political awareness of or whatever. It seems like they are making the decision based on the historical thing that their family are doing. It's whether the in communists or large part, nationalists. Now, in some areas, um, like in in Kinwa, uh, where I did, had zero experience, but uh, Trinh Hap Chau used to talk to me about it. He said in some areas, uh, since 19 from 1940 onward, roughly, there had, there had been, to a certain degree, off and on communist governance in some few local areas. And, uh, and that was the case, I know, in Binh Dinh and Phu Yen and Quang Ai, too. Uh, so some people were offended by that, but for other people, my landlord, for example, he said that during that uh, period of the war against the French, um, the the postal system the, the viet that was a viet minh postal system yes the Yaolin. road needed repaired yes the viet minh organized people to repair the road all those kinds of things and he said you know that, you know some people uh, don't like that but he said some people still respect it and uh, he, I, he was never very clear with me as which group he might be in but but he was very supportive of me and very, very helpful. And well, when, you talk, when you talk about that specific landlord, how does he feel about the government, government side, as versus the communist side? He's living right at the border. Uh, well, why, why he, was, he was a pretty intelligent fellow. He, um, he, he thought that the, the government side, for family reasons, had terribly mishandled the 1963 Huey incident, and uh, he is the first person who actually told me that the problem was not Ngo Dinh Khan. The problem had been Ngo Dinh Thuk, because Ngo, he said Ngo Dinh, Ngo Dinh Thuk, the archbishop, yeah, had been made archbishop in 
way. And uh, it had been celebrated with Vatican flags and things. Uh, I forget exactly when, but he said several days before the uh, Buddha birthday holiday. Yes. And, um, and the Buddhists were offended because they were not allowed to fly their flags. And Godin took, uh, he said, he, more than Godin Khan had pushed for a heavy police response. Um, so I, mean, I thought that was all you know, educative uh, for me, not, not terribly helpful in the end because uh, you know, nobody so it really seems to me attention. like those are internal issues rather than between the uh, nationalists and the communists. These are, we've been talking about yeah, these but things. I think so it made it more difficult for the nationalists to deal with the communists. See, the communists, generally speaking, presented a, a united front, even though there might be internal frictions with respect to personalities or difference of opinion, but uh, they were, relatively speaking, a more united front, I think. Whereas the, the non-communists, I, I think, were unfortunately uh, fractured. Um, now, with time, maybe it could have been ameliorated, if not um, reduced to irrelevancy, but, uh, but we ran out of time. See, and uh, on the, just as the, uh, the, the people in Vietnam had, uh, you know, had difference of opinions on the American side also, uh, we were relatively fractured. You're talking about the American? On the American side, oh. yeah. I think, uh, I, th I think that we didn't have, uh, we didn't have the, kind of pulling together that we needed. And, and some of the Americans who I think were capable of doing that, I, I think Rufus Phillips certainly did, for example. I mean, he had institutional loyalty and regard, but, uh, but Rufus wanted to get people to work, work together. Um, but but uh, there, there, were, there were some important differences of opinion. You look at the uh, CIA station chief, Pierre de Silva, for example, and uh, Frank may have some thinking about this, but I personally liked Pierre de Silva. But we had a fundamental difference on how to approach the, uh, the matter of uh, specialized small units of the sort that I had worked with Nguyen Zui Bear and uh, Major Kelly and some, I brought some instructors who've been with me in a couple of other programs up there to get it started. And uh, I, I, wanted, I wanted localized effort. Uh, as, as I said to Pierre one time, it, you know that it happens that 40-man uh, units uh, in three squads is what seemed to Nguyen Zui Bear and Kelly and me to be workable in Quang Ai, but uh, maybe in Shadek we're going to be talking about eight, an 18 person unit. Um, but in any case, the effort I think has to be, has to be locally uh, tailored and initiated um, and trained. Whereas I understood uh, pretty quickly that uh, for peer organizationally, what he wanted to do was centralized training. He wanted a kind of one, one size place. one size fits all, and he wanted to do it in a national training center. Um, so the the result was that uh, I was I was detailed off to work with Mac V, and then later with Special Forces, mm -hmm. and the. The, in, the intensive training was uh, for, for rural development cadre, as they came to be called, uh, was, was placed in a national training center in Bung Tau, where eventually another good friend of mine, Win Bae, uh, was put in charge 
after General Vinlop had attempted to have him assassinated <laughs> on a difference of opinion over corruption. Uh, so. what, what, you are, what you're describing seems to me more uh, about the tactics, what about the, uh, the ideas, I mean, the so-called idealistic thing uh, in the mind of these people. Is there any effort going in that direction, or are you just trying to provide them to, between the communists and the government seems to both uh, competing for satisfying the needs of well, the local? My, my immediate uh, interest, uh, because of because of where I was sent in that period, 62 and 63, and, and what I was trying to do, 63, 64, 65, 66, was, was in the local, very much in the local. And I thought if it was correctly implied, applied, it could have uh, a satisfactory outcome uh, nationally. Uh, in terms of in terms of national politics, my belief was that uh, that that would have to evolve, and I thought in every country it would have to e evolve. Um, uh, but I thought that it would ha it would have to evolve in Vietnam, but that it 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 probably uh, could. Mời quý vị đón xem phần bảy phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton. Nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu ngày 12 tháng 7, 2024.